Good morning, Keller Williams, and welcome back to the KW Command 66 Day Challenge 8.0, and today is day 32. So today we're going to pick up where we left off before the exciting product for enhancement video from yesterday, and that is inside of campaigns, and we're going to walk through the build out of a social ad today. So our campaigns applet is our megaphone icon. Let's dive into campaigns. And as always, anytime we want to start something new in command, there's going to be a big blue green button in the top right hand corner. As soon as this applet loads, we'll see that button here is create campaign. And we're going to choose to create a new paid ad campaign. When we do that, we're taken into the new paid ad experience. And this user interface may be a little bit new for you, but that's okay. We're going to walk through it. The first ad that we're going to focus on is just a simple listing based single image ad that incorporates the Facebook lead form and it's going to go out on Facebook and Instagram. So we'll go ahead and click on that tile and that will open up the builder. On the left hand side you can see all of the steps that we need to run through in order to build out this ad and on the right hand side you're going to see the ad preview so you can sort of see what it's going to look like as we continue to build it out. Now on day 31, we connected our Facebook page, so we should see that already connected. We can see that showing up here in the preview. If we had more than one page connected, we would see it in this drop down. If we want to connect new pages, we can do so using this link. Next up, we need to choose our listing. So we're going to click on please add your listings. And the first thing we need to do is say, well, what are we searching for? So how do we want to filter our search? Typically, I would just recommend that we go through and do street address and note that that does not include city or state. So I'm going to look for 2422 Fawn Lake Circle and we're going to do a quick search and it's going to go through all of the MLSs and attempt to find that property such that we can then feature that listing in our ad that we're building out. So there you go. So verify that this is the correct listing. I'm going to check on the dot and click on done. And then you can see, <laughs> excuse me, that that listing has been loaded. You can see that the first picture, right? So this is sort of photo one from the MLS is being loaded. We can change that in just a little bit. Next up, we've got our targeting section. So where do we want to advertise this actual property? Now we can choose the listing location so it knows where the property is located based upon the address and choose anywhere from a 15 to 50 mile radius around that property. We also have the ability to choose a custom location. So if we click on custom location, it's going to ask us to select either a postal code or a city to advertise that in. So if I know that a lot of people are moving from Austin to Katy, I might choose Austin, Texas. And now we can see that we're going to be targeting a 15 mile radius around Austin, Texas. I can still change this radius. It's just going to change where the center of it is. Instead of being in Katy, it's going to be in Austin. So that's how you would select a custom location. You can choose to target your database, but just not with this type of ad type. Remember, this is a lead form ad type. We'll get into targeting your database a little bit later. Next up, we're going to select the media that we want to utilize inside of this ad type. So do we want to select an image or a video? This was a single image ad type, so we're only going to select one. But you can see if we click on this drop down, it's actually going to preload the first 20 images pulled from the MLS. And if you hover over the image, it'll give you a little bit better preview or thumbnail of what that image actually is. So you can decide which one you want to use. So we can kind of go through here and if we wanted to select, let's see, there's a kitchen photo. I could go with that image and the preview should update here on the right hand side to show that kitchen photo. Next up, you've got text. So we can go in and we're going to choose to modify both the body text and the headline. The body text happens above the photo. The text happens below the photo. So you can see the body text, beautiful new home in and then the city from the listing just listed at price. And these where they have this little circle around them, those are actually merge fields that you can use pulled from the actual listing. 
and you can see there's a whole series of different merge fields. Now specifically, my advice, I don't typically recommend giving out the price or the address because why would they click on your ad if they can just use that information to make a decision on whether they're interested or not. And if you give them the address, they can just look it up on the MLS or Zillow or somewhere else. So in this case, I would write a body text description that didn't include city or price. Now, if I'm a little stumped and I'm kind of like, well, what should I use? We do have AI built into our ad campaign experience. And you can see that I can just click on that little magic wand and then say, suggest with AI. And it's gonna give me a brand new write-up. And this is pulled primarily from the public description of your listing in the MLS. But it certainly gets you started, right? Kind of gets the, the juices flowing a little bit. Um, so four bedrooms, two baths, 2396. I wouldn't give any of this information either, honestly, right? Because again, we're trying to talk people into clicking on the ad, not into not clicking on the ad. So large front yard, new fencing, rose bushes, and five separate dining, family room, breakfast area with gas top kitchen, and granite countertops, low taxes, low HOA, right? So there we go. So I used a little bit of what it suggested. I took out some of the information I didn't want listed and I'm gonna click on apply. And you will see that that updates here on the top right hand side. In addition to the headline, I'm gonna change that from street address to something like <clears throat> click here for more photos, pricing and to schedule a tour. The nice thing about the headline is we now can go up to 125 characters. Just realize that it most likely will not all show, even though it shows here on the preview, it will most likely not all show down here at the bottom. Next up, we've got the post lead submission destination. This is where you want them to go after they click on the ad, right? Where do you want them to actually land? So in this case, I typically go to my KW site, which we're gonna get to that in the future, right? We'll tell you about consumer. That's just not an applet that we've made it to yet. And we'll talk about how each one of our uh, agents in Keller Williams gets their own agent site. But I'm gonna go to my agent site and I'm gonna pull up the actual link for the listing. And I'm gonna put that right here. So you can see that that is now, and if we preview the URL, here's the listing page on my actual website. So that's what I would recommend. Now you could always use you know, a landing page, you could use something from your MLS, whatever you decide, but this is typically the simplest and easiest way is just to use your agent's site, look up the property, send them there. Next up, we've got some lead settings. So do I want to add any tags automatically to incoming leads? I might wanna add a tag such as Facebook ad, and I think I have that tag already stored as FB ad, and it's gonna check and see, and there you go, there's a tag I already have. I might also add a tag automatically that references the address. That way I know all of the leads that came in off of that property. And you should be able to see I've actually run ads on this property before, so I'm gonna choose that tag. If I wanted to create a new tag, I would just type in the tag name and then I could click on create as new tag and it would create that tag and then apply that tag to any future leads that come in through this ad. Next up, I can actually also fire a smart plan as soon as a lead comes in for on this specific ad, I can choose to create a smart plan and have that smart plan immediately fire. Now the smart plan does need to be created in advance. So just as a heads up, you're gonna to wanna to have that smart plan built out and ready to be connected. And if you're not familiar with smart plans, remember we talked about that back in days 11 through 14. So you might wanna check that out. Finally, we've got the DBA logo. So if you are using a design by chance, right, something that you've created inside of designs, you remember we did that a few days back. Um, actually, we haven't gotten to designs, I apologize. When we get to designs, you'll see that most of our designs actually have a logo and ownership statement included. If that was the case, you may not need to include it, but if it's not the case, you're most likely going to want to include your DBA logo and ownership statement. Go ahead and check with your local leadership to make sure that their, their own requirements are being met. Finally, you can see the ad preview on the right hand side. We're gonna come down to proceed to last step. This is where it's gonna say, how long would you like the ad to run? So you can see in this case, this is six days. 
Uh, the ads are typically firing same day. It's pretty quick on the response time, just as a heads up. So you can see that it fires today. It ends on the 18th, one, two, three, four, five, six days. And you can see the budget by default is $50. You can go lower by using the slider. You can go higher by using the slider. You can also type in a dollar amount if you want. If we wanted to go 10 days, maybe I could come in and click on the end date. Let's change that to the 23rd. And now you can see, oh, that includes the 13th. Just kidding, we should have done the 22nd. There you go. Now we're spending $4 a day for $40 in total. Finally, we'd come in and put in our billing information. We can see the preview one last time here on the right hand side. And if all looks good, I would click on purchase now and my ad would be triggered such that we would then be able to see it is in pending and then it would go active and you would start getting to see your impression count, your lead count and your click count and all your additional stats that come from the ads as well. So that's it for today, guys. A quick run through on how to start off the very basic of ads. Again, this was our single image listing ad. Tomorrow, we're gonna dive in and show you a couple of other additional ad types that you can utilize and some nuance with those ad types like target your database. Stay tuned for that. As always, it's great talking to you. Look forward to speaking with you again real soon.